Hi everybody, my name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. And we're the Yahoo on the Torah YouTube channel. And these are the Unknown Commandments of Messiah Yahusha. And this is um, our daily reading that we do as a family. And we thank you guys very, very much for spending this time with us. Sitting down with us, we really appreciate you. We pull up another leaf to our little table that doesn't have an option for a leaf. But we pretend we have a leaf here so that you guys can join us. And we would really, really, really appreciate it. Um... If you did, and we thank you so much for being part of our family. We thank you guys for the love. We thank you guys for the support. We thank you guys for everything. And um, we are getting into Matthew, and we are, today is month seven. It is the seventh day of our Creator's month. It is a second day, and um, it is the second day of uh, the week. It is the seventh day on his Creator's calendar, and so... We are watching the moon as we go through, and um, that's what we know of as new months and things of that nature. And so we will begin in the book of Matthew. Let's do the handy dandy split screen. Yeah, we almost made it. There we go. That Got was it. A long one. That was long because I actually messed this up to begin with, so it was even worse than it normally is. All right, so we are here. And what we are doing here is we call this segment the Unknown Commandments of Messiah Yahusha because we just went through a uh, six-month series and we discovered all the commandments of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah is the dad of Yahusha. And, um, the, and somebody was giving me heck on us saying Yahu, Yahusha. Um, it, there's no J's in Hebrew. And so there's never, ever going to be a name called Jesus. And I know that upsets everyone in their wall. Well, it's Jesus in my Bible. Well, he was never called Jesus, and he probably wouldn't have answered to that name. That I don't even know if that's a Greek name or what kind of name it is, but it does have a um, J in it, and there were no Js. And so the, the Hebrew alphabet um, is, is, is wise. Like the, the father of, of what you call Jesus is Yosef, and um, his, you, it's kind of like Yasha. It's like Joshua with a Y. And so I've heard it. There's some people say Yeshua is pagan, and that's and I don't know if that is true, but I believe it is Y A H U H. How do I, how do I do it? Yahusha. Um, the difference between what how we do it Y A H U S H A that is in the sefer at the bottom here is we believe it has a U A at the end of it, um, just like Joshua, and it may or it may not. Um, it is a one of those little details we do not know, but it is very very close. Um, to probably what his name is and he probably would have answered to it and if we want if you know We believe what Acts 412 says and it says there's only one name under heaven by which man may be saved If we don't have that name right then we're probably Have some issues and I, I don't think it's a salvation thing by any means But um, if you do know somebody's name and, and you, you you call them something else then it's not real personable It's not real, you know what it is. So um, the father's name is Yah, Yahuwah, and um, Yad Hade Vad Hed, and uh, the son Yahusha. And so let's begin, Matthew 4. Then Yahusha led up of the Ruach into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. And so the footnote on that is the Greek for tempted can also mean tested. Okay, so we have the Ruach in, and uh, we have Yahusha. And so he's out in the middle of somewhere, right? And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If you be the son of Elohim, command that these stones be made bread. Now, this again, um, the Trinity, right? The Trinity, Trinity, Trinity. Where people believe that the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all one. And people will pray to Messiah Yahusha. They will um, that's, that's what they do. And, and that's, uh, that is wrong. Even Satan had it figured out, right? He said the tempter came to him and he said, if you be the son of Elohim, why wouldn't Satan right here say, if you are really Elohim command that these stones be made bread, right? So right here, our, our Messiah would be a liar. Our creator would be a liar. And, you know, is, is Satan the only one that has his game together? Because it says, he asks, if you be the son of Elohim. And in other translations, it says the same thing. NIV says, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Um, and again, in the king, it says, if thou be the son of God, command these stones be made bread. There's one place where it says, I am 
in the scriptures when Messiah Yahushua is answering a question and people are like, well, that, that means I am. That, that means he's the, the father. And he never, ever says that. So we either have have lying deities among us or it is what it, they say it is. And he's the son of Elohim. Verse four. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahuwah. Okay. And that comes from Deuteronomy 8.3. Um, do we have that as a commandment um, in one of our, our things? No, because it's not really a command. No, it's not a command. But uh, he's repeating Deuteronomy right here, right out of the gate. The people that say Messiah Yahusha had a whole new doctrine and that he didn't keep the laws of our creator. He's quoting Deuteronomy right out of the gate. And we're only, he's like 30 some years right here old um, is what this is. The first chapter was his lineage. The second chapter, he was, what, two and three years old? Yeah, they were running around. And then yesterday, he was about 30 years old, and so we're, we're beginning the ministry right here. Okay. Then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If you be the son of Elohim, cast yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning you, and in their hands they shall bear you up lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. Okay, now let's, um, yes, yeah, that's Psalms 91, 11, and 2. Let's speculate a little bit here um, on this whole thing. So we knew that Messiah Yahushua was, was out like in a desert or out somewhere and he was fasting, right? Right. Mm -hmm. The devil comes to him, right? And then he's able to take him, like physically take him. He says he took him up to the holy city um, and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. So he basically went somehow transported to the top of a, a temple and um, he, he's like, he's uh, testing him, right? He's like, well, you know. Um, maybe he's not like physically sh transporting, but maybe like like a visionary thing. It like, could like it, maybe transform the surrounding thing. I don't know. I don't know. I, th I you know, I would, would Messiah Yahushua fall into a trance or a vision that the, the devil. I don't know. The devil could show him stuff. He could actually show him stuff. So did they fly through the air? Did the devil say, come here, let's go. And they flew up there. I mean, what did this look like? And I guess we'll never know. But there's a couple things here that we should um, understand here real shortly. Seven. Yahushua said unto him, it is written, you shall not tempt Yahuwah Eloheka. Now that is a command, right? right? We have that in a commandment. And so not only did he, is he the, um, repeating commandments, he is, he's repeating, you know, he's repeating what his dad already said. This is where, this is the next part I want to talk about here. Again, the devil took him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Okay, let's stop with right here. And you know, we live in a completely hoaxed world. Everything around us is a hoax. If you watch the television programming, everything that on there is a lie. It is a complete lie. They do not have stuff on TV that is the truth. It's always spun. It's always propaganda. It's always government propaganda. And all of the news agencies are owned by six different companies. And they're all, they're basically CIA owned. So what you watch on the news, if they say, oh, X amount of people are dying, it doesn't mean any of that. That's all they're doing is they're programming people. We recommend that nobody watches TV at all, nothing, that you do not watch commercials, you do not watch TV because it's called television programming for a reason. And I, I speak of this because the great hoax is that we live on a round ball that we're a bunch of monkeys on a spinning water ball. They believe that we're spinning around a thousand miles an hour and that we are little monkeys, that we've evolved out of monkeys, and that um, in, somewhere in Genesis that our creator said that he, he uh, you know, it, here's what people need to understand. They say that we're spinning through space at this crazy speed, even though nobody's ever felt a bump, no one's ever felt a jostle. Um, when you look at a lake, it's completely clear. And um, what I will tell you as an, as a, RF engineer for years and years and years, there is no curve. There is zero curve. I can tell you how radio frequencies work. And if there was curve like they have tried to sell us, then how radio frequency works, it does not work. So if I don't know what you call it. I don't know what we live on, but we are absolutely not spinning around. And they, they say it's eight inches per mile squared is what the curvature is. And you would be able to see curves simply looking out your, your door. 
And if those metrics, if those calculations aren't right, that's what they all have. And so we've been led to believe this kind of stuff. And I, I tell you guys this because it says the devil took him up to an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Can you imagine doing this on a ball? Can you imagine what happens if you go to the highest mountain on a ball? You you're, can't see the whole world. You're going to see a curve. You're going to see there's nothing to be seen because, and you know, that, that's what they say. They say, um, you know, Australia is upside down. For all of us, it's, it's literally at the bottom of the globe. And how does that work if you're upside down, right? There is no curve. Everything is all a great deception. And for those who have ears to hear, eyes to see, that is the truth. But anyway, let's continue on. So he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world, right? And all the glory of them. And he said unto him, all these things will I give you if you fall down and worship me. Now, that is a very bold statement. That is a very, very bold statement. How is it possible that Hasatan has all the kingdoms of the world and all glory of them and he wants to give it to Messiah Yahusha if Messiah Yahusha bows down? How is this possible? Uh, he probably saw the future of he probably showed him the future how how he's you know how he rules over everything. How how, how does how does the devil own this? Demons. I mean, how, he he has a control. He's he's in full control of everything that is around us, and he has power beyond power. If you do not think that Hasatan doesn't have power, this is a story right here that he took our Messiah up as high as possible to whatever mountain it is to, where he's able to see everything. He's pointed out if he's on a ball. And he takes him to whatever high mountain. He shows him the kingdoms. It's only going to be like a little tiny square. You're not going to be able to see very much to this. So this is a a, a ball uh, earth breaker. It does it doesn't work. And and scriptures do not work. There's no there's no there's no curve. It just doesn't work. Okay. And so he basically Messiah Yahushua then said unto him, Get you hence, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship Yahuwah Eloheka and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him and beheld, behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now when Yahusha had heard that Yochanan was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast in the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was... And we're back. Our little duct tape and rubber bands... Um, Tablet runs out of space. we got to constantly tend to the field of space. Okay, so we were saying that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Yeshi Yahu, the prophet, saying. Okay, and what did uh, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond the Ardeen, Galil of the other nations, the people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat in the region and the shadow of death, and shadow of death light is sprung up. And that came out of where, boys? Isaiah, Isaiah. 9, 4, and 2. How do you guys know that? Yeshahu. Isaiah. Right, okay. The footnote is Isaiah. Okay. For that time, Yahusha began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Yahusha, walking by the sea of Galil, saw two brethren, Shimon, called Kepha, and Andrai, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. All right. So we have some celebrities here, right? We have... El Kefa. And so we have... Uh, Andrew. Andrew's not talked about a lot. Andrew isn't talked about a lot, but he's. Uh, it's interesting. It's inter This whole thing is interesting. Let's read 19 real quick. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. Now, is there any situation that you guys could understand that you guys would be out in the field farming or something of the sort, and some guy, some random guy comes from somewhere and yells, Hey, come with me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Would you guys be inclined to go with this guy? I, I think so. I, I, mean, I think, mean, you think so? Some random guy you've never seen? I think here what happened before, I think there was actually a story before this where they threw the nets to the other side before this ever happened. This isn't the nets to the other side. This is long after. That I was think, long after. No, I think before they met him, this is the, they did it the first time. There was, I don't think. It happened twice. Does that? I don't think that happened twice. Mm, I don't remember that I at all. I think it did. I do not believe that is true. But um, we, you can you can research and you can find out. There's only one account when you threw the nets to the other side, and then that's when they bring in. There's two accounts of that one, and it's in two different two different books, and it all has to do with the 153 fish. I could be wrong. Yes, you are. Um, I believe you are. And if you are not wrong, I will come on and let everybody know that you are not wrong. But this, is, I believe, you are wrong. Okay. And there's one way you can prove me prove you right and me wrong. Research. Okay. Okay. So anyway, um, and he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So do you guys, this is not, this is not where they, 
tossed over. And regardless, um, is there anything? So if, if some guy came to you and said, hey, uh, tend your field over there and your melons will grow bigger or something of the sort, um, are you guys going to listen to them? What, what, you guys understand the, the situation here? Yeah, Those yeah. guys were expecting a Messiah. They were expecting someone to come by. So I think they knew Yeshua was on their they way. They had to be prepped. These guys had to be prepped. They had to have dreams. They had to have something prior to this that some guy is, they, they wouldn't know. The bot, what I was trying to get out of you guys is no. You would never, ever, some guy comes over the field and yells, hey, come, I will make you fishers of men. If you've never seen this guy, you're going to think this guy's crazy. Um, and you're going to say, no, man, I'm fishing here. We have our day's work to do. Just like you guys would be in your, your farm field. You're not going to leave this. So there is a spiritual aspect to all of this that these guys are willing to say that where they immediately left their boat and they followed him, right? They left their dad, right? And Zavity and uh, in the ship. So they left their dad. Pa just lost two of his employees, you haven't right? Read that one yet. Oh, I haven't. All right, 21. And you're going on. 19. Where am I? I know you're on 20. I think I I'm found on 21. It. I think I, yeah, I think I found it. 21. Did you? Yep. Where at? Yeah, uh, Luke 5. Okay, what is it? Uh, let me start at verse 1. It goes through verse, I think, about 10 ish. So, and it came to be while the crowd was pressing upon him to what hear. What crowd? Well, this is not. Right, but he hasn't met Kefal yet. This is about, he's about to meet Kefal here. Okay. He's out. Okay, so he talks about him. Said, and he. Okay, we'll start in 5. And Shemar answered. Oh, okay, yeah, this is him. He goes, Adam and I, we have toiled all night and caught none, but at your word, I shall let down the net. And they let down the net and got the fish. He doesn't know Adam and I. He doesn't know anything. Well, he's this been. Is you know, has been teaching here. This is where he meets Kefal. I do it, not think this it, is in the it, same then stuff. Then he tells him to come with him. I'm pretty... I mean, unless it's a different Kefa. It's the same Kefa. It's the same Kefa. So maybe they followed him because he was, like, preaching to other people? Mm, I don't know. Are they each have different... I don't know why they're all different accounts are this. Because it's 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 four different people's accounts of the exact same story. But I think Kefa was the first one. I don't think they would have saw this story. What do you mean? Because I think Matthew comes later, and then Mark and Luke all have different things. So that's, this is not, this cannot be the same story. I do not believe their father was in it. Remember the story that actually happened? With yeah, the, I think it's Jacob. Isn't that, isn't that Jacob? Isn't that uh, someone? Uh, James? Is James your brother? Um, Let's see, here's, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. John, I think. Do you think John's coming up soon? Right. So are we, are sure? we'll get back to you guys on this one. We're, we're obviously a little confused, um, but I do know there's two accounts of the 153 fish for sure. Okay. Let's get, let's get into this. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, Yaakov, the son of Zavadi, and Yochanan, his brother in a ship with Zavadi, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. Okay. Hold on there. There's John. John yeah. John and James. John and James. Okay. Yeah. So there and then I think Yehoshua had a brother named James. James, I, th I think so. I think he, I think Joshua had a, a brother, a biological he, brother. I think so. That was like I think Joseph. I think something about that. There was I don't remember that. We're probably confusing everybody out here with all this stuff if we don't know it. Um, Twenty-two, and they immediately left the ship and their father, their father, and followed him. Again, what I'm, what the point is, is that there has to be some kind of a supernatural thing that some guy is tells them what to do and, and he... They left their jobs They too. left their jobs, they left their livelihood, they left their father, they left everything, and they, they went and um, they immediately followed him. 23. And Yahushua went about all Galileo, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the Besorah of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Aram. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments and those which were possessed of with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy and he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galio and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Yahud and from beyond the Yardin. All right, so that is it. Um, so so Yehoshua is usually on, when he goes to the beach and stuff, he's like on, when he's waiting for them, like they're fishing, he's usually teaching out there. So he might have been teaching. It says, there. he says he was teaching, right? Yeah. And then he might have, like, Kefal might have heard them teaching or something, and then he's like, and like, we can't, he's been teaching for all night, and he's like, guy, we haven't caught anything, and he goes, toss your net back in. Yeah, but that is, we got to get to the bottom of it. If there was another incident where they did this, I don't remember that ever being the case. And so we will, uh, you're in Luke right there? Yeah, it's Luke. All right, so. Mark 1. Mark 1? Uh -huh. Mark 1. I think I just 15. Said, Mark 1, 15. It starts at 15. 115. All right, we're going Time. off the deep end here, but we will. Um, we yeah, going? it's just it's just the same thing as uh, Matthew. Just follow me, and they left everything. It didn't Mark say, it 1 didn't is say what? anything else besides that. But it says, 
Now, after Yochanan was put in prison, Yeshua came to Galilee preaching the Basora of the kingdom. So he was preaching. He, was preaching. he said he was preaching earlier. And so he was preaching and, and Kepha heard him. Fulfilled. And then he walked by and told them. So he, he was preaching, so they... Still, I would have to say that you're not ever going to find... You're not going to go seeking a random guy. You're not going to leave your family. You're not going to leave your job. You're not going to leave your entire... This is all they knew. This is how they make money, right? They To do this, it is a supernatural account. And so we will figure this out as a family, and we will dial this in. And so we will actually have a better idea coming on tomorrow, and we will, we will know if we... Who's right? Was Dad right or was Cade right? We shall see. Okay, so right. that is it. Um, anyone else have anything? Nope. Read your Bibles. Uh, read your Bibles. Hope um, you guys have a great day. Yep, and tomorrow night we have Youth for Yaw in Spanish. We're a little bit behind. Um, we had some issues last week. Hopefully we do not this week. And we shall see you guys soon. Much All love right. to everybody out there. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.